Western Australia is the state that has really been smashing it when it comes to gold mining in Australia. But before this, Victoria was one of the most gold saturated places in the world. Some 80 million ounces were won during the gold rush that began in 1851. But Victoria is somewhat unique when compared to other gold rich areas around the world, because more than half the gold was never found, and it lays beneath our feet at this very moment. To me, this makes Victoria unbelievably interesting because even though a massive gold rush has occurred pretty much throughout the entire state, there's so many gold rich quartz loads that were missed due to the recent volcanic eruptions that occurred here, which have buried them and have obscured them completely. The gold in Victoria was deposited between 500 to 400 million years ago. The volcanic eruptions that occurred here did so within the past 5 million years. One of the richest places where alluvial gold was worked can be found in the Creswick region. Beneath the many tens of metres of basalt are ancient rivers that were buried due to the volcanic eruptions and these rivers held an immense amount of gold. So even though the rivers were found and were mined, the majority of gold laid in hard rock quartz that shed the gold was never found. So to this day, gold rich quartz still exists in the Creswick region beneath the basalt, just waiting to be found. But many rivers weren't found, so alluvial mining in Victoria still isn't completely off the table. But this is just one example. The basaltic eruptions that occurred here covered close to half the state in varying amounts of basaltic lava. The Melbourne Geological Zone is another area that has proven gold beneath the basalt, and we've been searching for it. In recent times, a few significant discoveries have been made. But the Ngambi gold mine recently shocked the world with the announcement of a 340 gram per ton reef that was intercepted. With the price of gold booming, more money is being spent to investigate Victoria's hidden gold rich reefs, and we are seeing the beginnings of yet another gold rush. But it's a different gold rush, rather than it being artisanal with lone prospectors digging holes with little more than a pick and shovel, the methods of prospecting are now far more technologically advanced. So if anyone tells you that the old timers got it all, you can call them out on their BS, because there lies more gold than what has been found in this state. It's just hiding beneath layers of cheeky basalt. I hope this has appealed to your imagination the same way it appeals to mine. Thanks for watching. Around 500 million years ago, the majority of Victoria was little more than a deep sea. The coastline could be found in far western Victoria, around this line. Even though times have changed, the sands left behind would prove to pay a little over 600 million Australian dollars due to them containing precious heavy mineral sands. This video focuses on the geology behind the extremely profitable Douglas Mine, which mined these sands over a period of 8 years from between 2004 to 2012. This is also a story of responsible mining, as the land where the Douglas Mine operated is scheduled to be fully rehabilitated by 2025 by the Iluka Mining Company, showing the world that mining in Australia can be done responsibly and respectfully. The heavy mineral sands that were mined here consisted of ilmenite, leucozene, rutile and zircon. The first three minerals are titanium oxide bearing, which play a role in many different industries. These minerals have a wide range of applications, including paint, sunscreen, pigments, welding and use in the ceramic and glass industry to name just a few. Zircon is a nesosilicate mineral. It also plays a role in many different industries and is a beautiful gemstone in and of itself, similar to how rutile is. These minerals were eroded from rocks on land, and were eventually carried out to the sea by ancient rivers that would have flowed from west to east. Once there, waves and tidal actions influence where these minerals will be deposited. Heavy mineral grains are concentrated by their size and density as a result of the constant churning and washing effect of the waves. Lighter and less dense particles are carried further offshore or back onto the beach, while heavier minerals settle out of the water column more quickly and accumulate in certain areas, forming placer deposits. These placer deposits tend to be reconcentrated over time, normally as a result of changing sea levels, storms and wave actions, which work to enhance the richness of them. And that's exactly what happened in Western Victoria, before much of the land had become uplifted by multiple tectonic events, the beach was located in this area. And the rocks supplying these minerals were volcanic in their origin, consisting of the weathering and erosion of ultramafic and mafic igneous rocks, like basalt. So how concentrated was this placer deposit that the Douglas mine was digging up? 
Well, it was $617,818,000 Australian dollars worth of concentrated goodness. They removed the overburden and any soil that lay atop these heavy mineral sands and they stored it to rehabilitate the land post mining. Big props to them for doing that by the way. After they had the sands exposed, they simply dug it up and separated it similar to how a gold mine would separate gold from lighter materials. The result was a concentration of the aforementioned heavy black sands of ilmenite, leucosine, rutile and zircon. This was a major deposit and after mining was completed, work was done to fully restore the land back to its original setting. The original topsoil that was dug when this mine first commenced was placed back on top of the mine land and cover crops were grown to re-enrich the fertility of the soil. This work is still ongoing and will be completed around 2025. If you look on Google Satellite, you can still see the open pits where this ancient sand was extracted. Very cool stuff, I applaud this mine for their rehabilitation efforts, but I'd love to see the area before it gets covered up. When we look at the discovered locations of heavy mineral sands on Geovic, we get to see this very cool line which appears to be the limits of the ancient beach that existed here some 500 million years ago. But we also have that one oddity, existing in the area northeast of St Arnold, which could be a placer deposit that was deposited after sea level changes, or it could be the next area that became the new coastline after the Pyrenees got uplifted 480 million years ago, following a subduction event. Either way, it tickles my imagination. Especially because we have a very small deposit found just west of Kerrang. Could there be more mineral sands beneath the Ordovician strata stretching south to southwest of here? I suppose time will tell. I hope this intrigued you as much as it intrigued me. And as always, thanks for watching. Imagine a time when the very ground beneath your feet glittered with hidden treasures. Where the roads that connected a burgeoning nation were paved not just with stone, but with gold. This is a story of how gold was not only in the mines, but was quite literally in the roads leading to those mines. One of the worst things about the gold rushes in Australia during the 1850s was the terrible roads that led from Melbourne to the goldfields, especially during the trek to Ballarat. Wagons would be bogged down in muddy conditions for weeks. Areas became notorious for their awful soggy conditions and in many cases, roads were just impossible to navigate through. As the years passed, work was put into creating gravel roads and at the time no rock was more prevalent than the river rocks that were being dug up en masse by the miners, especially the quartz. Rounded alluvial rock was becoming more and more common as rivers, creeks and tributaries were dug up. The gold was separated from the gravel and the gravel would be thrown into piles. It made sense to load up this gravel into wagons and to use it to build roads. Nowadays many roads in the goldfields still contain this gravel that was placed here over 100 years ago, and asphalt has been laid over it. But this story focuses on the gravel that was used to line the streets of Ballarat in the 1850s. To say Ballarat had streets lined with gold would be an understatement. When mining first commenced here it consisted of alluvial work. Hard rock mines were still in their infancy, so quartz wasn't crushed to extract gold. Instead, these large quartz rocks, often laden with gold, were collected during alluvial mining operations and used alongside other river rocks for road construction. This inadvertently led to streets being lined with gold-bearing quartz. Occasionally the gold in these rocks was large enough to be visible to the naked eye. As word spread about the golden treasures embedded within the roadways, people began to pilfer quartz gravel from these paths. They would steal significant quantities to crush and sift through in hopes of extracting copious amounts of gold. This practice became so prevalent that it posed a genuine problem for local governance and road maintenance. Recognising the severity of the issue, authorities eventually prohibited the removal of road materials for private gold extraction. Mining companies, learning of the valuable losses, also became more discerning about the rocks they released for infrastructure use, limiting the access to potentially gold-laden quartz. By the 1860s, as the mining industry matured and shifted towards more efficient practices, the technique of crushing quartz to extract gold became mainstream. Specialised companies emerged, focusing exclusively on processing gold-rich quartz. This shift marked the end of gold-laden quartz in road construction, as more valuable materials were now being carefully processed to maximise gold extraction. 
Today the quartz that once formed the foundation of Ballarat streets is hidden beneath layers of modern asphalt. The romantic era of visibly gold infused roads is long gone, replaced by the practicalities of contemporary road building. So this is the story of how Ballarat's roads were quite literally lined with gold. Thanks for watching. In Victoria, gold is predominantly found in quartz veins that have shot their way up through the fragmented sedimentary bedrock and deposited themselves in the many fractures and faults that were created by immense tectonic events, namely from subduction events. The second place gold can sometimes be found is in areas that are volcanic, such as the Stavely Volcanic Arc, the Mafeking area of the Grampians or the volcanism found in a Bucken Rift. But in today's video we're going to look at a geological oddity, that being gold found inside of recently released volcanic rocks like basalt and scoria. One of the most common things that you'll see if you journey to Victoria is basalt and scoria. This erupted material is a recent phenomenon with it being released within the past 7 million years. Prior to this there were some other eruptions that date back to around 30 million years ago which occurred predominantly in the Melbourne zone due to the rifting event that formed the Port Phillip Sunklands. But in general, Victoria has remained relatively geologically stable for around 360 million years. So how on earth did 400 million year old gold find its way into 7 million year old scoria? To say this is strange would be an understatement, but if we look at the records from the 1800s, we come across this article. Gold found in basalt. This was a stunning revelation, and in all honesty, it shouldn't exist, yet it does. But why? If we look at this article, we see the word scoria being mentioned, and this is our first clue. Scoria and basalt are both mafic rocks, meaning they're both high in magnesium and iron. But the key difference is scoria is formed from explosive eruptions whereas basalt is formed from effusive eruptions with very little to no explosivity. The defining characteristic of scoria is its vesicular nature. This just means that it contains many holes where gases rapidly escape from the lava when it was explosively erupted onto the surface. The area where gold was found in scoria and basalt is known as Camperdown, Namely around Mount Lura, I hope I'm saying that right. Mount Lura is a scoria cone, and it blasted out explosive lava in the past 7 million years. The volcanic eruptions that occurred in this area were heavy and numerous, with thousands of vents extending across the region. These volcanic eruptions created many volcanic lakes, both due to explosive eruptions and because old rivers and pathways that water would flow through were covered up leading to a highly dammed landscape. These volcanic eruptions covered the ancient gold laden landscape that existed here for hundreds of millions of years, obscuring the gold rich quartz reefs and ancient rivers that flowed through this land, creating an entirely new landscape in the process. Gold was sampled in crushed scoria, and a bunch of it was sent to a pyrite works in Ballarat to be crushed and tested for gold. It yielded 15 grains to the tonne. This doesn't seem like much, but when you consider how abundant scoria and basalt is, one could easily make that payable, even back in the early 1900s. But how did the gold find its way into the basalt and scoria? Well, the most likely reason gold was found was due to explosive eruptions. Beneath Camperdown, these volcanic eruptions most likely brought up gold as the ancient bedrock got blasted out along with the magma during eruptions. But another way this could happen is through remelt. Mafic lava exists at a temperature between 1000 to 1200 degrees Celsius, and gold melts at 1064 degrees. But it's far more likely that gold was blasted out along with the scoria as the lava cooled. When this revelation became known, multiple claims were taken out to test a basalt. But we never heard of anything else, and the land's potential for gold more or less became forgotten. I suspect this is because the gold was patchy, with it occurring in some areas and being devoid in others. But with that being said, the article did point out that multiple samples were taken from miles apart and they all contained gold. It's very lucky that by chance this miner managed to crush a bunch of scoria that contained gold, but ultimately that luck ran out as nothing more ever came of it. This somewhat confirms the suspicion I had regarding this area of Victoria, which is highly volcanic. 
The deep lead lines, that being the ancient gold laden rivers that were covered by the basalt end where the basalt begins. But beneath the basalt is a land filled with golden rivers and ancient gold bearing quartz veins that were never found and exploited. The basaltic eruptions here were simply too numerous and the shallow groundwater was a major obstacle to exploration in these parts. Thus there exists gold fields as abundant as Ballarat, just lying in wait to be found and exploited. But it's unlikely this will ever happen unless we as a country become truly desperate for gold. It's definitely there though. So this is how ancient gold deposits found their way into young volcanic material. Thanks for watching. The spatial distribution of gold in Victoria has been a hotly contested issue since the days of the gold rush in the early 1850s. At first it was assumed that gold bearing quartz was emplaced solely by volcanic processes, namely within intrusive rocks like granite. However, this theory failed to explain the distribution and richness of the gold found in Victoria, with most places hosting auriferous quartz within folded sedimentary structures that bear no association with granitic intrusions or volcanic processes. In this video I seek to clarify how gold was deposited by orogenic processes and why so much of it exists in Victoria. But before I do, I just wanted to take a moment to mention our Patreon which helps me to continue creating videos like this one. The link to this will be in the description or you can search it up at patreon.com slash ozgeology. Consider becoming a member of either that or our YouTube channel by clicking the join button. I drew my information from several notable and peer reviewed papers, all of which outline the fact that the predominant way that economic amounts of gold have been found to have been deposited is by gold bearing metamorphic fluids released during tectonic collisions. When the theory of plate tectonics became mainstream in the 1960s, it became increasingly apparent that the mountain building process that occurs during subduction events is responsible for the deposition of gold. As mountains are thrust up during collisions, the folded and faulted rocks become conduits for the emplacement of gold. The prevailing theory is that deep basement rocks are metamorphosed when they reach a specific temperature and pressure level, leading to the mobilization of gold bearing fluids. When Victoria was forming, it was little more than a deep ocean, but within this deep ocean floor was the eruption of an unthinkable amount of basalt. During subduction processes, water is dragged down along with the subducting plate, and it is also released from water saturated rocks. This water lowers the melting point of the mantle and mobilizes fluids that percolate their way up through the crust through fault lines. Basalt contains a very small amount of gold, but when millions of cubic kilometers worth of basalt got subducted, the release of this gold occurred as this basalt became metamorphosed. There exists certain pockets in Victoria where this deep basement basalt has actually become uplifted to the surface from deep within the earth. This is one example of the basalt that is exposed today, known as the Mount William Metabasalt. As you can see, this was deposited in the Cambrian and is the oldest rock to be found in Victoria. If we were to test these rocks, they would contain absolutely no gold in them, not even trace amounts as it has already been sweated out, so to speak, when subduction occurred here. The large mountain belts that once existed in Victoria have been highly eroded to the point that they resemble hills today. This marked level of erosion deposited vast amounts of gold which spurred the gold rushes of the 1850s. A link has been made between orogenic gold provinces like Victoria and other similar gold provinces like California with the chemical composition of the rocks all around the world being similar as outlined by Goldfarb and Groves 2015. So the mountain building process that occurred during the numerous subduction events that Victoria underwent is the reason for the high percentage of gold that existed during the days of the gold rush and even today. Much of this gold lies beneath the recently released basalt just waiting to be found. One thing to keep in mind is that this is the predominant way that Victoria was enriched. There are some volcanic anomalies that have deposited gold, but in general, the majority of the gold in Victoria is orogenic related. So that's why Victoria is so abundantly filled with gold. It has ancient basalt to thank for the level of richness that exists here. Thanks for watching.